This is Math 142 and uh, it's section 7.4 and what we're going to do is we're actually going to start solving some equations that have that have trig functions in them. So let's think about something that said sine theta uh, equals one half. Algebraically what we could do is we could take the arc sine of both sides. Right, that, how do you undo sine theta? This is bringing in the angle, spitting out the ratio. So we could do something like this. Now here is a really subtle point about this. Sine, um, inverse sine, arc sine, doesn't return all of the values, as we know, that, that would output a ratio of one half. Remember, sine itself is limited just to here and here. And if we're talking about sine of some angle that has a height of one half, there's an angle here. There's another angle here that does it as, as well. So arc sine only returns one answer, but this equation, when we're solving this equation, what we're looking for is any theta that makes this true. So actually we'd have this angle if this is a height of one half. We'd have this angle, and then we're gonna have a bunch of other angles too, right? Because you can go 360 or two pi and then a bit more. Or you can go 2 pi and a bit more to get to that. Or you can keep doing that, right? You can go around 15 times if you want, and then a little bit more to get up to that 1 half. So this actually has uh, a lot as an infinite number of answers to it. And we want to find them all. So this, all that this does is that gives us one of the answers. So we can arc sign and we can build from there in order to get the other answers. So let's start with uh, just finding... Uh, some theta values for that if we take the sine of them would spit out one half and we know that one half is one of our, our benchmark ratios so sine is height so basically what we're doing is we're looking for a height of one half it happens here at pi over six it happens here at five pi over six and it doesn't happen anywhere else um, on the unit circle with just one rotation so pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Now we're going to think about two different types of answers here. One of them is just within a full rotation. So if we just asked from 0 to 2 pi. Now this notation here is set notation. And this hard bracket, this hard bracket that's right here, uh, this means that 0 is part of the set. And this soft bracket means 2 pi is a boundary, but it's not part of the set. Writing this is like writing this. 0 is less than or equal to theta, which is strictly less than 2 pi. So these two things mean the same thing. So if we're looking for answers just in this rotation from 0 to 2 pi, there they are. So there's one of our cases. But if it asks for all of the possibilities, now we're going to write this this way. We, we could have pi over 6. Right, that's, that's going to be this rotation right here. But remember also, if we go all the way around, if we go 2 pi and then pi over 6 more, that gives us another thing that works. Or if we go 2 pi twice, 4 pi, and around again, we will have the same uh, ratio when we take the sine of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say pi over 6 plus, and this is funny notation, 2k pi, and you don't need to write this part, it's assumed, where k is an integer. And remember, integers are um, anything 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then the opposites of those, negative 1, negative 2, and so on in that negative direction. So k is an element of this set. In other words, k is some integer. So notice if k is 1, that's a full rotation. If k is 10, that's 10 rotations. If k is negative 2, that's negative 2 rotations. And the other thing then would be 5 pi over 6 plus 2k pi. And some, sometimes people will write this uh, 2 pi k. That's okay. This is just notation. It all means the same thing. So this would be, if we only want the solutions within one rotation, this would be every single possible rotation for it. So let's do another example. A cosine of theta is negative 1 half. So we know cosine's about width in x direction. So if we were to go back one half, or in the direction of negative one half in the x direction, we would have this rotation here and this rotation here. 
Now remember, um, if we were to use that arc cosine or that inverse cosine, it would only give us this angle here. It wouldn't give us both the angles. Um, and that's within, a, uh, that's within one full rotation, 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to do the answers both ways so we get used to seeing them both ways. So we know that, uh, whoops, forgot that negative. Negative 1 half, that's one of our benchmark ratios. So let's take a peek at unit circle. So we want a direction in the x direction of negative 1 half because we're doing inverse cosine of that value. Um, and, you know, you can think of it this way. It's good to make this connection. It's good also to know that really what we're answering is this. This is a different question than this. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So uh, a width of negative 1 half, notice that happens here, and it happens here. There's this nice symmetry in these, right? Straight up, straight down from there. So that's going to be uh, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. This angle here and this angle here, we got both of them. If we were to just go this route, this alone only spits out the 2 pi over 3. It doesn't spit out both of these, whereas this one, th these are different questions. This is saying, what's the arc cosine or inverse cosine of negative 1 half? It is 2 pi over 3. This is asking, what theta values can I go the cosine of and get negative 1 half as an answer? I'm going to run a little uh, parallel example here. If I go the square root of 25, the square root of 25 is 5. Square root only spits out positive answers. But if I were to solve x squared equals 25, I'm looking for all the possible x values that if I square them, they give me 25. Notice x could be negative 5 or 5. It gives me both of them. Square root as a function, because it's a function, only spits out one answer. Um, and it helps me get at the other answer here. But x squared equals 25 is asking a different question. It's asking what are the, all the x values such that if I square them, they give me 25. Similarly here with inverse cosine and cosine of theta. All right, so this would be my answer if I was asked for just values from 0 to 2 pi. Change that color back. <laughs> I think that's the right color. And um, if I was looking for everything that possibly works, it would be 2 pi over 3 plus a bunch of full rotations first, right? So 2k pi, so full rotations, and 4 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. It's subtle. It's a subtle point, but it's important to make. These are the answers that only work within one rotation, within one full rotation. These are the an any answers of any form that works. This is actually an infinite number of possibilities, right? As we let k be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. So this gives us all of the full rotations in that. This gives us all the full rotations in both directions. This one gives us all the full rotations in both directions in that. Forward. Let's connect this to a graph, all of these answers, like this 2 pi over 3 and this 4 pi over 3. So, and in using Desmos, um, I'm already in radians. That's good. I'm going to change this step to a uh, pi over 3 on along the x-axis. So if I do that, notice I can zoom in a little bit and it'll show me these are going in steps of pi over 3. And I think that... Um, since it's not going to graph very big, I'll just make this from negative 2 to 2. Good. And what I'm going to graph is uh, y equals cosine of x. It looks like this. What I was trying to solve was cosine of theta equals negative 1 half. So negative 1 half is here. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, that's ugly. It's right here. Negative one half is right here. And if I look at all the times that this happens, it happens here, it happens here. There's my two primary solutions that I got. But since this thing is periodic, since it keeps flowing like this, it's going to happen here as well and here as well. Notice this is this value plus 2 pi. And this one is this value plus 2 pi. Or I could get back to here which would be this one minus 2 pi. And it's going to keep hitting that height. It's going to keep hitting that negative 1 half here and here, and then cycles of 2 pi after that. That's, that's why it repeats itself forever, because it keeps going around the circle.
So let's do another one. Uh, sine of theta equals root 2 over 2. So I'm looking for sine values that would have a height of root 2 over 2. And I know that there's two of them in a full rotation. Arcsine would only return one of them, would only give me this one. Now, um, since I have this, this benchmark angle, this root 2 over 2, I can just look this up on the unit circle. And what I'm going to do, though, is I, I want to just find just find this value right here on the unit circle. And then from there, figure out what this value must be. So uh, trust me on this one. Now we're looking for a height of root 2 over 2. And I notice that it happens here. And it happens here as well, right? So I know my answers are pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do this one and then derive that one from it. So pi over 4, and we know the other one's 3 pi over 4. This angle, this angle that's right here is pi over 4. Now, I, I, I saw it already. Like, I know my other answer is going to be 3 pi over 4. <laughs> wow. I know my other answer is going to be 3 pi over 4. So let me think about how to, to get there from here. Sine's about height, and so they're going to both be at the same height. So I noticed that this rotation here is 180 degrees. And this rotation that's right here matches that rotation. That's a pi over 4. So the way I could get at the other one, 180 degrees or pi. So what I could get at the other one is I could go pi minus that pi over 4. So when I'm looking for sine values, if I know one of them, Let's call this uh, alpha. The other one is going to be pi minus alpha because they both have the same height. So notice now if I go pi minus uh, pi over 4, this is 4 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4 pi minus 1 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. So there's my two solutions if my answers are limited from 0 to 2 pi. And if it's all the answers, the infinite ones, it's so that. So let's do another one. We want to find all the uh, possible angles theta that solve this equation. Cosine of theta equals 3 fourths. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for a width, a, a distance in the x direction of 3 fourths. And I know that there's one here, and there would be one here as well. Now... 3 fourths doesn't show up on the unit circle. That's not a benchmark ratio for me. So I'm going to have to uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of figure in here. So I know I can get this angle here by using that arc cosine. So in other words, if I go arc cosine of 3 fourths. Now, um, let me do that on my calculator. I'm going to stay in radians. So first off, let me make sure that I'm, in, I'm actually in radians. I am on my calculator. And I'm going to go inverse cosine of 3 fourths. So the ratio is 3 fourths. What's the angle? And I'm not going to get this in terms of pi. I'm not going to write this in terms of pi. I'm just going to go out three decimal places, uh, 0 0.723. And I said equals, but I rounded. So I will say about that. If you wanted an exact answer for this, I'm not going to be a stickler on this, but if you wanted an ex exact answer as this, you would just leave it like this. You just wouldn't turn it into a decimal. That is the that that version right there, that's the exact answer. So you could leave it like that if you want an exact answer. So we know that it's that. So this angle that's right here is about 0.723. So let me think about how to get this with cosine. This angle and this angle are going to be the same, you know, positive rotation, negative rotation. Think about that full rotation is 360 degrees or 2 pi. So if I were to go 2 pi and then minus that angle, that will give me uh, that will give me my other angle. So for cosine, if I have some alpha, this other angle right here is the full rotation 2 pi minus it because cosine's about width. 
So let me do that on my calculator. 2 pi, 2 pi minus whatever that answer was. And what I like is, you know, I have it in my calculator, so I can just go 2 pi minus answer. And, you know, you can get answer right here. It looks like about 5.560. And notice both those values are in our range 0 to 2 pi. Oh, that's a soft bracket. Um, you know, 2 pi is about 6, a little more than 6. So these are within those. And if I wanted all the solutions, I'm going to write them the this, this same way. 0.723 plus that 2k pi. Now one thing I want to point out again, if you wanted to write the exact values for these, and again, I'm not going to be a stickler about this, but it would be inverse cosine of 3 fourths. That's this. That's this value right here. Plus 2k pi. And then we could say something like, uh, what's interesting to me is notice we got this by, by subtracting that from that. So there's a couple ways we could write it. Um, you could write it as the simplest one is 2 pi minus cos inverse 3 fourths plus 2k pi. And this is a fine answer, but if you want to put a little more thought into it, like this 2 pi is just adding this 2 pi. So really, it could just be negative cosine theta blah 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 plus that. Now that, that works for the cosine case. So let's do one more like this. Tangent of theta equals negative 0.3. So that's 3 tenths. This is not a benchmark angle. So let's think about tangent. Tangent is negative 0.3. So remember, tangent is steepness. It's rise over run. So basically, we're going to have this angle here. And then we're also going to have this angle here. Inverse tangent of negative 0.3. I'm going to do that on my calculator. And notice it returns this negative value, uh, negative 0.291. So what that has given me is this angle right here. Now I really want to keep my answers uh, just because of form between 0 and 2 pi, my, my initial two answers. So I can convert that pretty easily into it just adding 2 pi to it. So before I do that though, let me figure out what, what uh, this angle right here is going to be. So what I can do then is add pi to this to get that full rotation. So if I go pi plus my negative 0.291, that will give me the other angle. Let me do that. So I had gone inverse tangent and negative 0.3 and got that. That's one of my angles. So now if I go pi plus that, 2.850, that's my, that's my other angle. Now, if you start to like, feel like I'm, I'm kind of losing track of what's going on, I'm claiming that that's one of my angles. So what I should be able to go is go tangent of it. And it gives me back my negative 0.3. So 2.850. And I have this negative 0.291. And I want to make it between 0 and 2 pi. So let me add pi to that. I'm sorry, uh, 2 pi to that. And that positive rotation would be 5.974. There's my answer, 0 to 2 pi. And if I wanted the other answers, I would write the plus 2k pi. Plus 2k pi versions. So with tangent, when I'm finding tangent, let's say it was some positive angle. Notice here I, I can get this angle by inverse tangent of, of the value. And then if I add 180 to it, it gives me the, the other angle. So if I, once I have one of the angles, I can add 180 to it to get the other. And by 180, I mean pi. So um, if this inverse tangent is my alpha, working off of tangent, I can go pi plus that value to get the other one. So let's solve a couple of equations. So 2 times sine theta plus 1 is equal to 0. So let's get sine all alone, and then we'll, we'll work from there. So 
Notice I'm, I'm trying to find the theta that if I plug it into, the, into this equation, I go theta, sine of that angle, then times 2, then plus 1. So I'm going to do some, some solving here. So first off, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So 2 sine theta equals negative 1. Then divide everything by, by 2. So sine theta equals negative 1 half. And that is a benchmark angle. So let me peek at my unit circle. So I'm solving uh, sine of theta equals negative 1 half. So I want a height of negative 1 half. Happens here and here. 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And what's great about this is I can, I can check this answer on my calculator. So I thought that uh, one of my equations was 7 pi over 6. And so I have uh, 2 times the sine of one of those angles plus 1. And it should give me a 0. Yeah, and that's good evidence. I could plug 11 pi over 6 back in too to check it. So there's my answers. I can write my answers this way if I only need an answer from 0 to 2 pi. But notice that all those rotations would work as well. So if I was looking for all of the possible answers, I have to take into account those full rotations past there. Let's do this next one. Same idea. Add 1 to both sides. And that sine is squared. Uh, divide by the 2. Sine squared is 1 half. And now notice that sine is squared. So really, I, I need to square root both sides. To get rid of that square. So sine theta is the square root of 1 over the square root of 2. And notice though that um, since I brought in the square root, this is a plus or minus. So let me clean this up a little bit. Uh, 1 over root 2, that's the same as root 2 over 2. So sine theta equals plus or minus root 2 over 2. Now I want positive heights and negative heights there. So if I look at this one on my unit circle, that's going to be, there's that height of root 2 over 2, and there's that depth of root 2 over 2. So pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. And that's my 0 to 2 pi rotation. Remember, I could also write the plus. Uh, 2k pi for each of these instances. This one on the left, I'm going to work to get that cosine theta alone, and then I'll see what I can do with it. Uh, so I'm going to subtract, uh, subtract root 3 from both sides, and then divide by 2 since it's 2 times cosine. And I get cosine of theta equals negative root 3 over 2 negative root 3 over 2, and I was dealing with cosine, so cosine's about width. So negative root 3 over 2, that width is here and here. So it looks like 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. If I was just looking for values from 0 to 2 pi, my answer would be this. If I was looking for all possible answers, it would be that. And I think what I would like to do right now is just check one of these answers on my calculator. So I have this 2 times cosine of theta uh, plus root 3. And one of my angles was 5 pi over 6. So I'm going to do this uh, by going... And that was supposed to be a 0. And it is. So I know that one of my answers is right. I feel pretty good about the other answer. I, I could check it if I wanted to. So let me uh, deal with this next one. Uh, 3 times secant squared x e uh, minus 4 equals 0. So let me get that secant squared all alone. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides, first thing. Next, divide by 3. So now I have the secant squared of x equals 4 thirds. I'm going to square root both sides. And remember, when I square root, a plus or minus is going to come in with it. So secant x, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 3 is root 3. Now if secant, whoops, sorry, the squared is gone, sorry about that. So if secant is plus or minus 2 root 3, let's see, secant is, uh, is cosine, the inverse of cosine, right? Or the reciprocal of cosine. 
So this would be the same as that. Love it. Clever. So that means then that uh, I can look up those cosine values. So cosine of x plus or minus root 3 over 2. Those are benchmark angles. So I'm looking for a width of root 3 over 2 in both directions. Pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. So my answers are uh, pi over 6 plus 2k pi. All right, two more to solve. So let's take a peek at this first one. Inverse, uh, I'm sorry, tangent squared of theta minus three equals zero. So let's get that tangent squared all alone. Add three to both sides. And now that we have this squared, let's square root both sides. Remember that plus or minus comes in when we, when we square both sides. So tangent is plus or minus root three. So we know that, that tangent is sine over cosine or y over x so basically what we want is the root 3 part to be in the numerator so notice like in this case right here root 3 over 2 over 1 half the 1 halves would cancel that would give us the root 3 so this is anything where um, any value where the sine is the root 3 over 2 value so that's going to be these and notes all those positive negative cases so we have uh, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So theta is equal to uh, pi over 3 plus 2k pi, 2 pi over 3. Now there are more efficient ways to, to write this when you start to notice that like this is just this one plus pi and this is just this one plus pi. You could write instead of writing them all out, you could have written pi over 3 plus just k pi and 2 pi over 3 plus k pi. The back of your book might do that sometimes, but if you write it this way, you're, you're safe. All right, last example. 3 cosine squared minus 5 cosine plus 2 equals 0. This one is, wow, it's crazy weird. Look at the, we have the cosine squared and the cosine. Now this is something that isn't a quadratic, but it's in a quadratic form. In other words, notice I have cosine here and cosine squared here. I could do a little little substitution and say, I'm just going to let x equal cosine. So notice then that would mean that x squared equals cosine squared. And I'm going to substitute that in. So 3x squared minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 0. And now we know how to solve this. It's quadratic. We could factor it or we could run it through quadratic formula. Either way, and if I factor this, let's see, this would be like 3x2 times x minus 1. Yeah, if I multiply that out, that gives me a negative 2x. It gives me a negative 3x, negative 5x in the middle, positive 2, positive 3. Yeah, good. So this factors to this. So that means that uh, if I multiply these two things together and get 0, that equals 0, or that equals 0. So x equals 1, add 2, divide by 3, x equals 2 thirds. Cool. But I'm not looking for x, I'm looking for theta. So now that I've done this, I can plug this cosine of theta back in. So cosine of theta is 2 thirds and cosine of theta is 1. So now I just have these two things to solve. Uh, 2 thirds is not a benchmark angle, but 1 is. Remember, cosine is, is width. So if I'm looking at when is cosine 1, it's here at 0 degrees. So in this one, it's 0 degrees, or 0 radians, same thing. Now for the 2 thirds to get these two, I'm going to have you use my calculator. So I'm going to go arc cosine of 2 thirds. Now if that had been a 3 halves, I'd get no solution off of that because that's greater than 1. But in this case, it's that many radi radians, the, the 7.86, or 0.786.
And notice since it's cosine, you get the other one, they're both width. So that would be my 0.786 angle. So I'm going to go 2 pi minus that to get the other possibility. 5.497. And there it is if I'm, if I'm limiting 0 to 2 pi. Again, like we know, we could add 2k pi to each of these to get all our solutions. So when you have something that's in this form, something, you know, some trig function, some trig function squared, it's not a quadratic, but it's in a quadratic form. You can do the substitution, get these two cases, and then solve them separately for the for the trig functions. Hey, post questions in the forum. In the forum, message me and uh, good luck with this.